Ladies and gentlemen, the Municipal Code Enforcement Board is charged with conducting hearings to determine whether an alleged violation of the C Code has occurred. Decisions made by the Quasi-Judicial Board will be based on the evidence and facts presented tonight. Our meetings are conducted in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order, and each case will begin with the City presenting its evidence of the alleged violation. The respondent will then present his or her case. Both parties will have an opportunity to cross-examine all witnesses. The board members may question any witness. Comments by both parties must be relevant to the case. Persons wishing to speak will be given an opportunity to do so by the chair and must address the board from the podium after giving their name and address. Upon request, copies of materials submitted by the staff are available for review. Board members are reminded to have made, obtained permission to speak from the chair and questions of the city should be directed to the city attorney. At this time, I will ask all persons who expect to give testimony tonight to stand and be sworn in by the city clerk. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony or evidence you're about to give or present is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? 
Cases will be taken out of order to accommodate respondents and witnesses present at tonight's meeting. Uh, Mr. Baroni has one announcement and then we'll begin with, I'll, well, first I'll tell you what our order is. Uh, case number one, case number one will be case 190280. And case number two will be the last one, 191067. Mr. Baroni. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. I'm sorry. Can we, I, I, I've fallen off the wagon here. Okay, uh, you want me to stand by? <laughs> Uh, do I, has everyone read the minutes of the last meeting, received and read? Any changes, any, any last minute changes? Okay, uh, call for a motion that we accept the minutes. Second. It's moved by Mr. Dave, second by Mr. Nafke. <laughs> you missed, you haven't been here for a couple yeah. days. All right, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay, no nays. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, code board members. Uh, this evening, um, Pam Shoshone's on vacation, and uh, I'd like to introduce and welcome Rich McIntyre that's going to be sitting in for the city tonight. He's the city attorney. And I'd also uh, mention that Mr. Stevenson is here tonight, the city manager. So I just want to say welcome, and uh, thank you. Thank you. First case. Uh, and you were here last month, were they? And I actually did read the minutes and have some notes on Good evening, board members. This time I'd like to ask the members if they've had any ex parte communications regarding any of the matters coming before the board this evening. If you've had any verbal communications, if you would please disclose the sum and substance of those communications when and where those communications occurred and with whom they occurred. If you received any written communications, if you'd please disclose the nature of those communications and then provide them to the clerk so they can be placed in the record. I have had none. None for me. None for me. None here. None. None for me. None. Good. First case. The first case will be case number 8190280, City versus TAH 2017 One Bar LLC for property located at 8604 Grandview Drive. The case is before the board based on alleged violation of Section 81021313C, roofs maintained in good repair, and Section 12861E6 fences appearance. The case will be prosecuted this evening by <coughs> Officer Jose Silva. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening, board members. Jose Silva, co compliance officer. This case originated proactively January 15th of 2019. My inspection at the time noted stained fascia, heavy staining on the vinyl privacy fence surrounding the residence, and vines growing on the walls. Left door hangers with a compliance date of January 28, 2019. An inspection on February 26, 2019 revealed no change, so I completed a notice of violation with a compliance date of March 13, 2019. No one was home, so I posted a notice at the home front door as well as City Hall, also mailed copies both certified and regular mail to the address of the registered owner. My inspection on March 14, 2019 revealed the vines on the walls of the residence were removed. This time I have six photographs I'd like to submit taken by me on March 14, 2019. It's gonna be the posting of the notice at the front door, stained fascia, stained yard privacy fence, and side fences. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. On March 29, 2019, conducted an inspection of the property and the fascia staining has been cleared. I'd like to submit an affidavit of compliance for the staining fascia being cleaned. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record.
as of today, the side yard fences, the vinyl pr privacy fence are still stained and out of compliance. Are there any questions for Mr. Silva? There being none. Just, just for one night, just one question, just for clarification. So, as of right now, the the, the walls and the fascia are in compliance. Yes, sir. The only thing out of compliance as of right now is the fence. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is the respondent here? Excuse me. The respondent is here. Yes, the the tenant is here. Please. Both at the same time? I, or I'm not really sure, but. Well, one at a time. Who wants to be first? Sure. Yeah. yeah. You, are the, you are the owner? I represent the owner. Okay. I represent the company, the, the entity uh, that owns the, the, the property. Name and address, please. Uh, my name is Julian Ospina. Address is uh, 12705 Shadowcrest Core in the city of Riverview. Okay. Um, so, as the gentleman stated, uh, we we have completed uh, most of well the, the fascia as well as uh, the resident completed the uh, the, the removal of the weeds. Um, unfortunately, there was some miscommunication on our side. We didn't know that the fence was uh, was part of the violation, which is why it wasn't taken care of. Um, but uh, you know, we would be more than than willing and, and happy to take care of that as soon as possible. Uh, you know, within this week. Uh, we were just not aware of that, and um, you know, mainly it's just uh, communication between uh, the, you know in, within the company is just not ideal. We are working on that, um, but um, you know, like I said, we'll go ahead and take care of that as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Any I questions? have some pictures of uh, you know the work that we completed, but uh, the gentleman already provided those, so I guess you guys won't need those. That's unless you want to prevent present them. And then we'll go into this the This fine is the same uh, picture, so. All right. Yep. All, all right. right. Fine. Any, sorry, go ahead. Are there any questions of Julian? Okay. We'll take your, your. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I really don't have anything to add at this time. <coughs> Come I on up. I'm Come sure. on up. Give your name and address, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Joel DeAngelis. I live at 8604 Grandview Drive, Temple Terrace. And um, I, I actually just took care of the, uh, the only thing I would have to add would be um, that I pressure washed the inside of the vinyl fence this weekend. And there, in reading the, the notice of violation, it may have been uh, a little, a little bit of ambiguity there. I wasn't aware that I needed to do the outsides. And we're on the outside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I, I should know better. Okay. Yeah. But that's that's all I have to add. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Do you think that you, you it was said that you probably get it done in, in this week and and there unless it rains every single day, it's not likely that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think manageable. That's, okay. Yeah, I think that's 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 realistic. All right. Mr. Napke. Is it, <clears throat> excuse me, is it yes. realistic that you can pressure wash all that staining off? With the proper cleaner, okay. I think you could do it. Um, I, I think I, at this time, I, I, I would assume that, that Tricon will be the ones coming to do that work. Um, I can do it. Right. Okay. But, Who, whoever's but, going to do it, is it <laughs> realistic yeah. to expect it to be? We are going to be responsible for that, and if um, you know, if it is not, uh, if let's say the pressure washing, and we also try to uh, treat it with chemical, if that is not sufficient in order to um, you know correct the violation, we would be more than happy to replace whatever you know panels need to be replaced as well. All right, thank you. I got a thank question you. for him. Yes, Ms. Sean. Yeah, for Mr. Spina. Uh, you mentioned earlier you said it'd be done within the week, and then you said as soon as possible. Yes. Sir. So my my question is. Is it a week or is it as soon as possible? And what is your definition of as soon as possible? Sure, as soon as possible. In, in my in my case, is is you know as uh, as soon as realistically possible. So that that would be within this week. Uh, it will be taken care of for sure. Okay. Generally, sometimes when we make a finding, we give you thirty days. Okay. Is, is there a realistic expectation that if you try it with chemicals, it doesn't come clean, uh -huh. that you will have the materials to replace the fencing? 
it within will that be. 30 day period yes um okay. the the only i guess the the only question in 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 that case is um um so who would you know it we we might clean it now would you guys be able to go and inspect it once again to make sure that is yeah. uh acceptable yeah. yes within oh, those 30 days yeah. okay uh, yeah, Mr. the code enforcement director. Yeah. Okay. And, and based on the work you've already done, mm -hmm. I have faith that you'll have it. I just wanted it on the record there, so we know. No problem. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, is there any one of the board members to give a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Sean. Based on the, to uh, the, to the testimony of Code Compliance Officer Jose Silva and Mr. Julian Espina and Joel DeAngelis, presented to the board at this hearing and the documentary evidence received by the board, I make a motion that the board find TAH 20171 Borrow LLC in case number 19 0280 to be guilty of violating section 8-102.13 subsection C of the city code and section 12.861 subsection E subsection 6 of the city code. But because 8-102.13 subsection C was brought into compliance before the date of this hearing, no fine shall be assessed on that violation. However, because section 12-861 subsection E subsection 6 of the city code remains out of compliance. The respondents will have until May 8th. May 8th, thank you. May 8th uh, to be uh, come into compliance with the code sections in question. If the property is not brought into full compliance by that date, a fine of $25 per day shall begin to accrue on the day following and continue to accrue until the date the violator provides the city with evidence that the property has been brought into full compliance. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second by Brian. Brian. <laughs> Mr. We'll Chair, write them down tonight. Just uh, for clarity of the record, that would be May eighth, two thousand nineteen. Oh, so okay. probably one of May eighth, two thousand nineteen. I'm sorry. We have a motion, a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No nays. The next case will be case number 191067, City versus B and Empire LLC for the property located at 11001-03 North 56th Street. The case is before the board based on the alleged violation of Section 828A1 permits application required. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Officer Lori Smith. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Lori Smith, Code Compliance Officer. This case originated from community development when the building inspector issued a stop work order on February 15, 2019 for interior renovations that require a permit. Code Compliance Office received an email from community development on February 22, 2019 of outstanding building permits. On the 25th of February, a notice of violation letter was prepared that day with the compliance date of March the 11th, 2019. I posted the notice at the front door of the closed business and requested copies be mailed certified and first class mail and also requested a copy be posted at City Hall for the 10 day requirement. A check with Joe Ferris at Community Development still confirmed that the required permit remained out of compliance. At this time, I would like to submit a screenshot of the stop work order and exhibit one, which shows the stop work order posted as well as a notice letter at the front door. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record.
As of the 5th of April 2019, two permits have been approved for the plumbing and the electrical. However, the mechanical and the building permit have not been obtained and therefore the property remains out of compliance and I'm seeking a ruling. Without objection, the board, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Ball is in the audience. I okay. um, would like to address the board, sir. Thank you. Mr. Ball, name and address, please. My name is Rajesh Ball. Um, address is 10915 North 56th Street, Temple Terrace. Um, I am the owner of the property, not the tenant. That is under violation. But of course, it is my responsibility to make sure that all tenants comply with the city. Um, it was brought into my notice, um, this violation. Can you once. come closer to the mic? This was brought into my notice um, on this violation when uh, the last notice was pulled, which was the April 10th to appear that this has to be put into violation. At that point, I took over and um, I got my own contractors to pull permits for the electrical and plumbing. Um, HVAC was pulled yesterday on, um, and uh, the system was down again, so they were going to check on it today. Um, and then Lori just told me right now that it doesn't show in the system, so I'll go and check tomorrow. Why not? Uh, the building permit tried my best to get it, but they want, um, since I'm dividing uh, two units into one, they're requiring that I get an architect drawing done for both units, even though that the violation is just for that one wall that divides it, um, but they want us to do the architect. So if I'm going to do it for both the units, I have another tenant already coming in where we're building offices and everything, so I'll just have that w contractor do just one plan, the building permit, so I can get that building permit done as well at the same time. Right now, you don't have tenants in no. in place. Business is not operational. Yeah, not in those places, no. There was a, a Rose Grill, but he went out of business back in last year. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Dave? I noticed that the uh, stop work order expired on the 27th of March. Has another one been issued? Just, just that one. But so where's, where's the... So can he go back in? If, it, if there's no stop work order, what stopped him from doing work? Uh, <laughs> we, 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 we do monitor the property okay. to make sure that, uh, but however, the, the building department knows we were going to present this tonight mm -hmm. to the code board, so he knows we're taking some type of action. So okay. you're right. There is nothing that prevents him from working. However, we go by there okay. to make sure. And, well, the thing that prevents him from working, he doesn't have a building permit. Right, right. So, okay. I thank you for clarifying that. Any other questions? Sean? Um, do you already have an architect under contract to get these drawings completed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I own the own building, so I use a common architect whenever it's something I want to do. That, I, that is my responsibility, so I always use him. And you've pulled permits with the city of Terrace before? Yes, many times. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, can I get a motion on this? Please. Well, I guess, um, let's come on back up a minute before we make a motion. Uh, normally, because it, you are have been found to be in not in compliance, we would give you 30 days until our next meeting, which would be May 8th, um, to come into compliance. You think you can get all this done by May 8th? I'll get this done in two weeks. Two weeks? Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'll make the motion. <clears throat> Based on the testimony of Code Compliance Officer Lori Smith, as well as the Code um, com Code Compliance Director, uh, presented to the board this hearing the documented average received by the board, I make the motion that the board find uh, BN Empire LLC in case number 19-1067 to be guilty of violating sections 8-28A1 <coughs> permits applications. Um, of the city code and give the respondents until our next meeting on Wednesday, May 8th, 
2019 to come into compliance with the code sections in question. If the property is not brought into compliance by that date, a fine of $50 per day shall begin to accrue on a day following the compliance date and continue to accrue until the date that the violator provides the city with evidence that the property has been brought into compliance. I have, second. I have a second, uh, Mr. Westfall. And uh, any discussion? There being none, uh, call all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay, no nays. Next case will be case number 185233. City versus Elvira L. Machado for the property located at 12609 North 52nd Street. The case is before the board based on alleged violation of section 1034 sanitation keep premises clean. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Officer Lori Smith. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening again, board members. Lori Smith, co-compliance officer. This case originated, originated proactively November the 28th, 2019. My inspection revealed tree limbs and a big tree logs located in the side yard. At that time, I left the door hanger with the compliance date of the 5th of December, 2018. My inspection on February the 25th, 2019 revealed the tree limbs had been removed but the tree trunk still remained. Therefore, a notice of violation was issued with a compliance date of March the 8th, 2019. No one was home, so I posted the notice at the front door and requested copies be mailed certified and first class mail. I also requested a copy be posted at the city hall for the 10 day requirement. My inspection on the 8th of March, 2019 revealed no change. At this time, I would like to submit photographic evidence of the violation taken by me March the 27th, 2019. I have two photos. Uh, exhibit number one is a notice posted at the front door. Exhibit number two are the tree debris in the side yard. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. I spoke with Ms. Machado several times and granted her extensions to bring the property into compliance. There were improvements to the tree limbs and the smaller logs uh, being removed. However, however, as of this date, there has been no change to the big tree logs and therefore the property remains out of compliance. Ms. Machado is in the, uh, the courtroom tonight and she'd like to address the board, sir. Okay. Okay. Has she not been the daughter? You have not been sworn in. She got to be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony or evidence you're about to give or present is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Name and address, please. My name is Maria Luis Saavedra Machado Ruiz. Is that mic not on? Don't know. It's on. I can hear you. Okay. okay. Well, what she said is all true. This is the saga of the cut, you know, finish cutting the tree. I'm here to represent my mother, which is, uh, who is uh, 88 years old. Uh, I live here part of the time. At the times I live in Zephyr Hills, I keep an eye on my mother, on the lot, and all that. First of all, the tree is not on the side yard, it's on a lot, an empty lot, that does belong to my mother. It was a big tree, the guys that were cutting it left the job unfinished. In the meantime, we've tried to finish the job. My husband has gotten into it, my son has gotten into it, a friend has gotten into it, three 
saws have broken because it's a big tree. It's a big tree. Yes. Uh, I don't want to pay a lot of money to finish cutting the thing. So we've been cutting it. It's just we haven't finished the job. So I would like an extension. I don't know exactly when it's going to be finished. We'll try to do our best, you know, maybe another month. But I don't see that the tree is like a, an eyesore, you see? And we've been chopping at it, you know, whenever we can. My husband was out there. I don't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday, came from Zephyr Hills to keep at it. My mom is all stressed out because, you know, every time she gets a notice, you know, then she calls me, ah, they're going to fight me, and, you know, it's... So, you know, what she says, it's true, and, but, you know, I'd like a little bit of lenience, you know, to finish the job. Okay. And uh, I cannot promise, you know, I'll try, you know, my husband said he's going to finish this weekend. I don't know this coming weekend, okay. but, you know. Can, can I ask a couple questions? Yes. Uh, is the tree appears to be cut off of the stump that's laying on the ground? It's, there's the stump is free from the tree. And well, the, the stump is like a big stump. Yeah. But it's okay, my, my husband was trying to make like, I don't know, something out of it. I don't know if he's going to do it or not. But, what but the, the, there's some logs, there's a big mm -hmm. log right by the stump laying there. Right. And that's the log that's been giving us the most trouble because every time they try to cut it, the saw breaks down. Right. And we've gotten like three saws. Oh. Maybe they're not the best saws, but I don't want to invest a thousand dollars on a saw that's only going to be used for that. Yeah. Of course, I could hire somebody to come and finish the job, but they charge, you know, not. Uh, Lori, not can, I, can I ask you for input on this? Yes, sir. Um, is the tree? I know sometimes the city can pick up some trash or rubbish if it's close to the street. Yes, sir. And they can use the clam truck to pick it up. Is this something that the clam truck could probably pick up? Uh, it depends on how what the, uh, the rating on that boom truck is. Normally, mm -hmm. it's about four thousand pounds uh, for that boom. Um, how short are the pieces? Are they like six one feet? One piece or is they... pretty uh, pretty good size, sir. I mean, the, the trunk, you know, part of it is still there, and then you have the piece that's on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, I had suggested to the son. In, in trying to help the family uh, being in you know, a hardship and, and uh, with a tree company was rather expensive. So I uh, talked to the son and said, you know, go get a bigger chainsaw. You probably need at least a 30 inch bar to cut through that log, get a snatch strap, chain it, and drag it out to the curbside and call for a special trash pickup. Yeah. I, I suggested we've, that. We've done that already with part of the tree, and that cost us 200 and some dollars for the pickup when we were led to believe that it was going to be cheaper, but it turns out that maybe they spent more time there than, you know, yes, it was uh, previewed, I don't know. Yeah, there but, is a minimum, you know, there, is, there is a minimum charge and then there's a time charge as right, to how long it takes. Right. Uh -huh. So, you know, that tree has become very expensive. <laughs> I believe, sir, that the, blue, the boom truck could get it. Um, like I said, those are usually rated about 4,000 pounds. That's right on the end of the claw. Um, and I believe that it could get it. It's just got to come up closer um, where it's at. It's, mm -hmm. it's not right right by the street, um, but it seems to be pretty, uh, you know, solid ground where it wouldn't get stuck um, pretty even. Uh, they would just have to come in on the property, the property a little yeah. bit, sir. It's not going to be right at curbside. Right, and then it would have to be an agreement that if the tr truck makes grooves in the ground that we don't care about the grooves. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, going to be grooves I mean, there anyway from the tree. All sides, you know. um, well, what what we will do is we'll, you know, if we rule on the case, usually, as it was said previously, uh, we do a ruling for 30 days before any fine would begin to accrue. So you have... 30 days that in all likelihood you can arrange something to um, get it taken care of. Okay. But is it feasible that the uh, city will go there and get that big... Uh... Tom, please. This case, this case, just so you know, this case initiated back in December of 2018. So Lori has been working with the homeowner to try to get 
compliance. Mm -hmm. So I believe the tree trunk itself is too far from the roadway. My, I would like to see them somehow drag it out closer to the street area because the city is not going to be responsible for damaging any of their mm -hmm. property. I mean, mm -hmm. so. Uh, or if we get a waiver. To give you guys well, well what my suggestion <laughs> no, would be, what my suggestion would be, to, is to give the respondent uh, 60 days. Uh, and normally you give 30 days, but in this case, uh, we're willing. Our goal is to get compliance, and uh, we're willing to help her out. But again, we're not going to bring a boom truck onto that property. That's just not going to happen. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So that, that would be my recommendation. Sir. I think we. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Wells. That, that's my recommendation. I have a question for Tom. Or Mr. Wells. Hey, Tom. Um, you can finish it. I. So the stump itself. Is the stump still on the ground, or is that what I'm looking at in the photo? Is that the stump? There is, there is a big stump. Um, oh. And that's part of it that 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 came off. Uh, the other part that's laying on the ground. So the stump is still there. So um, yeah, there's the a photo? big big piece that's still um, in the ground, and then that's what what fell. Was the right. other so piece. that's that's the stump, right? Yes. I mean, to be honest, I mean that's that's a. It's very ambitious for mm -hmm. a homeowner to try to do. Yeah. I mean, a, you need a stump grinder and a tree company to. Well, I, I know. I hear this, Is it the stump also, or just no, what's laying on the just, ground? It's what's laying just on the, the tree on the stump. stump? Right. Okay. You don't have to remove the stump. Right. Okay. Okay. So okay. the stump can stay the way. It is. Okay. <laughs> okay. All righty. Yeah, All righty. Yeah. Yeah. That answered the question. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lloyd. <laughs> I, I just to reiterate. Paul Bunyan. <laughs> I mean, if we do, um, if we give you the two months, because there has been some time. Yes, it has and, been and some time. And, and, and I agree, she's been very okay. nice and very, you and know. There, and some options have been presented to you. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that from a risk standpoint, regardless, we wouldn't want the truck to go on there for grooves. The truck's meant to be operated on a solid surface, hence why the stuff has to be on the street. Uh -huh. So then we'd be putting our city employees possibly at risk. So that's why we really need it on the street so the truck can stay on asphalt. So, um, I mean, you know, I think, you know, another 60 days, we're looking at six months that this has been going on. So I just, yes, I just understand. say for you. I understand. Yeah, all right. And, you're right. And you're Everybody. standing you're standing here <laughs> now, so we'll take you at your word on that if, it, if so be that someone Anyways, on this board makes a promotion. Uh, a motion. Are there any other questions? There being none, thank you. Thank you. Maria? Thank you. Can I get a motion on this, please? I'll, Mr. I'll, Lloyd? Yeah, I'll make a motion. <laughs> Based on the testimony of Code Compliance Officer Lori Smith, Ms. Machado Suarez, is it? Maria Luis. Maria Luis. <laughs> okay. Um, and Tom Baroni presented to the board at this hearing and the documented evidence received by the board. I make a motion that the board find Ms. Elvira Machado in case number 18-5233 to be guilty of violating section 10-34 of the city code and give the respondents until I'm going to go May 8th, uh, 2019 to come into compliance with the code section in question. If the property is not brought into compliance by that date, a fine of $40 per day shall begin to accrue on the day following and continue to accrue until the date the violator provides the city with evidence that the property has been brought into compliance. What was the fine? 40. 40. Thank you. And May you went with the 30 days instead of the 60 days. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll be happy to explain that once a second, sir. Okay. Second. I have a second by Mr. Okay. David. Because this actually started back at the end of November, I believe was the first date, so December, I would like to get an update at the next meeting as to what's Progress. been attempted, and then we can always extend it uh, as we've done in the past. But I don't want to wait till two months from now and we'll get down in the rainy season and this tree's now sunken down in there. So that's why I did the 30 days. Okay. Okay. Motion, second, discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay, no nays. Maria, I'm just going to go the easy way, Maria. <laughs> um, you've been given, there is a fine that will begin to accrue in May. 
uh, of $40 per day uh, if the tree is still there. Uh, we've, uh, you've been invited to come to the May meeting to present the progress, and uh, we may extend and may not. Depends on the progress. So okay. if it's all done, then we're fine. I understand. Now, if uh, everything is done, do I need to come to the next meeting just to say it's done or? Uh, no. If, you're, uh, if, it's, if it's all finished. I'll do a letter of uh, uh, affidavit of compliance okay. and submit it to the board so you won't have to be here, not unless you would like to come. Okay. Fine. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Case number 18-5554, City versus U.S. Bank National Association for the property located at 7911 Shore Bluff Court. The case is before the board based on alleged violation of Section 8-102-13B, exterior walls maintained in good repair, and Section 10-34, sanitation keep premises clean. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Officer Doug Allen. The city has evidence of the notice of violation and the notice of hearing are properly served. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Doug Allen, Code Compliance Officer. This case originated proactively by me on December 13th, 2018. My inspection on that date revealed stained exterior walls and debris in the backyard. I left two door hangers with a reinspection date of December 18th, 2018. My inspection on December 18th showed no change, so a notice of violation was prepared with a compliance date of January 2nd, 2019. I posted the notice at the site as well as at City Hall and copies were mailed both certified and regular mail to the address of the owner of record. My reinspection on January 4th, 2019 revealed the site was not in full compliance as the wall staining had not been taken care of, but the debris in the backyard had been removed. A notice of hearing was prepared on March 28th, 2019 and the case was scheduled for the April Municipal Code Board meeting. I've had no contact from the property owner or the representative and the site is currently for sale. There was additional cleanup work being done to the interior so I provided additional time hoping they would also correct the exterior violation. This time I would like to submit photographic evidence of the site taken by me on December 18th and 27th of 2018 and on March 29th, 2019. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Uh, exhibit number one shows the notice of violation posting. Exhibit number two shows a stained exterior wall. Exhibit number three shows another stained exterior wall. And exhibit number four shows the debris in the backyard. I'd like to submit an affidavit of compliance for the debris in the backyard, which is section 1034. But since the site is not in full compliance with the wall standing, I'm requesting a ruling on that section. The board will accept. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Mr. Sean, Mr. Lloyd? So the house is up for sale, but nobody's living in it? Or is somebody Correct. living in no, it? Correct, no, it's vacant. Okay, I noticed the screen porch. Is it pretty secure back there? Someone got back in that area? No, the fence is, I mean, there is a wooden privacy fence surrounding the backyard area, okay. and it's secure. Okay, good job on the debris. <laughs> yeah, that was a mess. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Mapke. The stuff inside the screen porch is gone too? Yes, sir. The site, the entire site inside the house and the porch area has been cleaned out. Okay. Any other questions? There being none, thank you. You're welcome. Call for a motion. Come on, you guys, pick it up. Okay, are you going to do it? Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to assume I'm going to do number four. <laughs> assume correctly. Uh, based upon the testimony, uh, based upon the testimony of Code Compliance Officer Doug Allen, um, presented at the board at this at the board presented to the board at this hearing, and the documentary evidence received by the board, I make a motion that the board find 
U.S. National Association trustee um, in case number 185554 to be guilty of violation sections 8-10213B and uh, 1034 of the city code, but because section section uh, 1034 was brought into compliance before <clears throat> before the date of the hearing, no fine shall be excess, assessed on that violation. However, because section 8-10213B remain out of compliance, the respondents will be given until May the 8th to come into compliance with these code sections. If the property is not brought into full compliance by that day, a fine of $30 per day shall be, begin to accrue on the following date on May the 9th, I believe, and continue to accrue until the date the violator provides the city with evidence that the property has been brought into full compliance. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. Second by Snelling. Any discussion? There being none, call for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No nay. Next case, please. Case number 19-0054, City versus Safe Haven Property Investors for the property located at 314 Springdale Place. The case is before the board based on alleged violation of Section 8-102-13B, exterior walls maintained in good repair, and Section 8-102-13C, roofs maintained in good repair. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Officer Jose Silva. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening. Jose Silva, co-compliance officer. This case originated proactively January 3rd of 2019. My inspection at the time noted the walls and fascia of the resident stained. I left door hanger with a compliance date of January 18, 2019. My inspection on January 24th, 2019 revealed no change, so I completed a notice of violation with a compliance date of February 6, 2019. No one was home, so I posted the notice at the front door as well as City Hall, also mailed copies both certified and regular mail to the address of the registered owner. On February 4th, 2019, I was contacted by Ms. Dent, who is the homeowner. She was requesting additional time to correct the problems at the residence. I gave her until February 13th of 2019. On February 11th, 2019, I was again contacted by Ms. Dent, requesting additional time. I gave her that time until March 3rd of 2019. On March 14th, 2019, I inspected the property and found that there was no change. The walls and the fascia were still stained. This time I'd like to submit photographic evidence, three photos taken by me on March 14th. The first photo was taken January 24th, 2019, depicts the posting at the front door. The other photos taken March 14, 2019, showing the stained fascia and stained walls. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. As of this afternoon, the property is still out of compliance. And I've had no further contact with the registered owner. Mr. Napke has a question. Yes, sir. In all these in all these months, has the homeowner done anything at all? Excuse me. In during the time period, nothing has been done at the residence. Okay. Other than the grass being cut. Thank you. Does, Mr. Lloyd. Does Miss Dent live there? Excuse me. Does the Miss Dent live there? Miss Dent does not live there. They live over on the east side of the county, okay. down on Sassa. They're planning on moving into the house. Uh, they do <clears> own the house under the LLC that it's re registered as. Okay. So it's vacant. It's vacant. Any other questions? There being none, thank you. Thanks. 
Call for a vote. Well, no motion. motion. I got half my <laughs> I'm waiting and I just gave it up. Motion, please. Based on the testimony of Code Compliance Officer Jose Silva, presented to the board at this hearing and the documentary evidence received by the board, I make a motion that the board find Safe Haven Property Investors LLC <clears throat> in case number 19-54 to be guilty of violating sections 8-102, subsection 13, subsection C. Is that the only one? Oh, that'd be. Oh, and excuse me, 8-102, 13, subsection B of the city code and give the respondents until May 8, 2019 to, to come into compliance with the code sections in question. If the property is not brought into compliance by that date, a fine of $50 per day shall begin to accrue on the day following the compliance date and continue to accrue until the date that the violation the violator provides the city with evidence that the property has been brought into compliance. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. David. Mr. Lloyd. Oh. I was going to use the same. Are there any comments? Um, I have one comment on the the last case we had uh, exterior walls. We had one, only one, uh, well, there were two violations, and one was taken care of, and that was $30 a day, and this one has two, uh, quite similar, and it's $50 per day. Uh, is there going to be some consistency, or are we, is, is everyone good with that? I'm happy with it. Okay, good. I think the good. facts of the case dictate the, the amount. Okay. There's been no change. The, the property owner hasn't done anything. At least the other people they're, they're showing did something effort getting, getting yeah that's that was the basis okay. of my good okay uh, any other comments there being none call for a vote all in favor aye, aye. opposed nay no nays next case Case number 190333, City versus Brian A. Hoglin for the property located at 7945 Terrace Ridge Drive. The case is before the board based on alleged violation of Section 12860 and operative vehicles, outdoor storage equipment. The case will be prosecuted this evening by Officer Lori Smith. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening, board members again. Lori Smith, co compliance officer. This case originated proactively on January the 17th, 2019. My inspection revealed an inoperative vehicle with an expired registration parked in the driveway. At that time, I left a door hanger with the compliance date of the 24th of January, 2019. My inspection on January the 31st, 2019 revealed no change. Therefore, a notice of violation was issued with the compliance date of the 10th of February, 2019. No one was at home, so I posted the notice at the front door and requested copies be mailed certified and first class mail. I also requested a copy be posted at City Hall for the 10 day requirement. My inspection on March the 26th, 2019 revealed no change. At this time, I would like to submit photographic evidence of the violations taken by me on the 26th of March, 2019. I have three photos. Uh, one's a notice posted at the front door. Um, exhibit number two is front of the vehicle. Exhibit number three is the rear of the vehicle. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Ms. Smith, has there been any contact with any person? Uh, yes, sir, there has. Um, as a matter of fact, um, as of April the 8th, actually, uh, the gentleman called, Mr. Hoagland called in on April the 5th and uh, let us know that uh, he would be getting the sticker. Uh, he called for a reinspection on March the 8th. 
uh, which I did. I went out there. The site is now in compliance, and this time I'd like to submit an affidavit of compliance, sir. Thank you. Without objection, the, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Any questions? Uh, motion, please. I'll make it. The easy one. Yeah. <laughs> so counts. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the testimony of Code Compliance Officer Lori Smith, presented to the board at this hearing and the document evidence received by the board, I make a motion that the board find Brian Hoagland, or Hoagland in case number 19-0 333 to be guilty of violating section 12-860 of the city code but because the property is brought in compliance before the date of this hearing no fine shall be assessed second second by mr david any discussion we'll call for a vote all in favor aye. aye aye opposed nay no nays the next case will be next. case number 190767 city versus reference file number 1028 for the property located at 10030 Oak Hill Drive. The case is before the board based on the alleged violation of section 12861E6 fences main maintenance and section 81213B exterior walls maintained in good repair. The case will be prosecuted this evening by officer Doug Allen. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing were properly served. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Doug Allen, Code Compliance Officer. This case originated proactively by me on February 11th, 2019. My inspection on that date revealed stained exterior walls and a wooden privacy fence in disrepair. I left two door hangers with a reinspection date of February 25th, 2019. My inspection on February 27th showed no change, so a notice of violation was prepared on February 27th, 2019, with a compliance date of March 14th, 2019. I posted the notice at the site as well as at City Hall, and copies were mailed, both certified and regular mail, to the address of the owner of record. My reinspection on March 29th, 2019, revealed the site was not in full compliance as the wall staining had not been taken care of, but the fence was still in disrepair, so a notice of hearing was pre prepared on March 29th, and the case was scheduled for the April Municipal Code Board meeting. The resident did contact me on March 29th, stating he should have the fence repairs completed by the date of the April board meeting. This time, I'd like to submit photographic evidence of the notice of posting taken by me on February 28th, 2019. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Thank you. Exhibit 1 shows the notice of violation posting. This time, the site is in compliance, full compliance, and I would like to submit an affidavit of compliance, and I'm seeking a finding. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Okay. Any, any questions? You want to take it, Mr. Lloyd? Just get them count. done. Thank you. Still counts. Still counts. <laughs> All right. Keeping score, man. Okay. <clears throat> Based on the uh, testimony of Code Compliance Officer Doug Allen, presented to the board at this hearing and the documentary evidence received by the board, I make a motion that the board find resident reference file number 1028 in case number 19-0767 to be guilty of violating section 12-861, subsection E, subsection 6, and section 8-102, subsection 13, subsection B of the city code, but because the property is brought into compliance before the date of this hearing, no fine shall be assessed. Second. Second by Mr. Nupke. Any discussion? I have a question. Why are we referring to this as reference file 1028? That's generally either law enforcement or Okay. Uh, I know the customs guy, they had customs used to live in Double Terrace. Oh, okay. And 
Uh, so that's sometimes why they do that. I don't know. Is that the case? Yes, sir. It's a way okay. for um, first responders to stay okay. personally protected. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Call for a mo uh, vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No nays. We have two left. Case number 190776, City versus Fidencio Suarez for the property located at 706 East River Drive. Cases before the board based on alleged violation of section 1291 off street parking. Good evening, Jose Silva, co-compliance officer. This case originated proactively on February 12, 2019. Jose. Oh, I was, I was looking, I just wanted to fit, um, check something. Parking residential property. The case will be pro um, the case will be prosecuted this evening by Officer Silva. The city has evidence of the notice of violation and notice of hearing properly served. Sorry about that, Jose. She speaks so so low; it's hard to hear. <laughs> Jose Silva, co-compliance officer. This case originated proactively February 12, 2019. My inspection at the time noted a vehicle parked in the yard grass of the residence. This time I completed a notice violation with a compliance date of February 15, 2019. This was the third case I had within a two week period of this vehicle being parked on the yard grass. That's why I went to immediate notice violation. No one was home, so I posted notice at the front door as well as City Hall and mail copies both certified and registered mail to the homeowner. An inspection on February 21st, 2019 found no vehicles parked on the yard grass, so the case was brought into compliance. On March 16, 2019, I observed the vehicle parked in the front yard grass of the residence. Since it was within 45 days and the residence fell out of compliance, I set it for the code board. This time I have two photographs, one taken by me on February 13, 2019, posting the notice at the front door, and the second photograph taken March 16, 2019 of the vehicle parked on the yard grass. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. As of this time, the property has remained in compliance. I'd like to submit an affidavit of compliance. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Since that time, I have spoken to the homeowner and advised him of the situation. He's aware of it, and I'm requesting a finding on this case. Thank you. Somebody else want to get any points? Sure. I'll get some points. So he is in compliance as of the meeting, right? As of today, he's been in compliance. Okay. All right. I'll take care of it. Based, Mr. David. Based on the uh, testimony of Officer Jose Silva, as well as the documentary evidence presented to the board at this hearing, I make a motion that the board find Fidencio Suarez in case number 19-0776 uh, to be guilty of violating section 12-921 of the code, but because the property has been brought into compliance before the date of this hearing, no fine shall be assessed. Second. Second by Mr. Dapke. Discussion? There being none, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, nay, no nays. Case number 19-0932, City versus Ahmed Mohammed for property located at 5309 Grove Hill Road. The case is before the board based on alleged violation of Section 103B Sanitation Grass Weeds. Case will be prosecuted this evening by Officer Silva. The city has evidence that the notice of violation and notice of hearing are properly served. Good evening, Jose Silva, co-compliance officer. This case originated proactively February 19 of 2019. My inspection at the time noted the yard grass of the residence overgrown. I left a door hanger with a compliance date of February 22nd, 2019. My inspection on March 5th, 2019 revealed no change, so I completed a notice of violation with a compliance date of March 12th, 2019. No one was home, so I posted notice at the home as well as City Hall. I also mailed copies both certified and regular mail to the address of the registered owner. My inspection on March 18th revealed the yard grass was still overgrown. 
This time I'd like to submit two photographs, one taken March 5th, 2019, showing the notice posted at the front door, and one taken March 18, 2019, showing the grass overgrown. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. As of this date, the property has been brought into compliance, met with the homeowner last week who came into the office, and the property is in compliance, so I'd like to submit an affidavit of compliance for the property. Without objection, the evidence will be admitted into the record. Thank you, sir. This time I'm asking for a finding. Are there any questions? There being none, a call for a vote. I mean, a call for a, a motion. Sorry. Trying to get us out. Still trying to get us. <laughs> you do it, yeah. Mr. Snelling? It's easy points. Yeah. We are now. <laughs> <laughs> After last month. There you go. <laughs> Based on the testimony of Code Compliance Officer Jose Silva, <clears throat> Presented to the board at this hearing and the documentary evidence received by the board, I make a motion that the board find Ahmed Mohammed in case number 19-0932 to be guilty of violating section 10-3 subsection B of the city code, but because the property was brought into compliance before the date of this hearing, no fine shall be assessed. Second. Second by Mr. David. Discussion? There being none, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay? No nays. The ones on the right carried the weight tonight. Sean did a fine job. I have a question in general. Sure. And really, the, the question is, in either this case or the one before it, it was a picture at night. Do you all normally go out at night? And is, it, is that safe to do? I mean, it's before the time change. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> that was taken by me at 6.30 in the morning. On, we work with Saturday once a month, and I know that there's been a problem at this residence with vehicles parking there, so I went through the neighborhood early at that time and saw it there and took the photograph. You know, as with yard parking, it's here or there, there. Here a second, gone, gone the next. I mean, I, I'm pleased that you did it, but I would hope... I'm sure you use good judgment on the safetyness or being safe. That was from the street. Okay. I mean, uh, not even going on the property. That's taken from the vehicle from the street. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Unfinished business. Case number 18-4204, City versus James and Anna Cunningham-Clark for 11733 Primrose Lane. Uh, an affidavit of compliance for Section 81213P was submitted by Officer Smith, dated April 1st, 2019. Case number 184590, City versus 5400 Bush Boulevard, LLC, for 5400 East Bush Boulevard. An affidavit of compliance for Section 81667 was submitted by Officer Allen, dated March 15th, 2019. Case number 18. 5617 City versus Vincent R. and Cynthia J. Adkins for 5513 Temple Heights Road. An affidavit of compliance for Section 81661B and 81218A was submitted by Officer Allen, dated April 8th, 2019. Case number 190565, City versus SNTR LLC, Trustee Manzano and Associates, PA Registered Agent for 1811 North River Hills Drive. An affidavit of compliance for Section 103B was submitted by Director Brony, dated March 25th, 2019. Case is not on the agenda. Case number 160300, City versus Stella Hunley Harrison. For 9603 Overlook Drive, an affidavit of compliance for Section 12A24P was submitted by Director Brony, dated April 3rd, 2019. Case number 121424, City versus Stella Hunley Harrison. For 9603 Overlook Drive, an affidavit of compliance for Section 11. Dot 120 dot 9, 25, 750, M12, 25, 750, 
5, B7, and 27750 N1 it was submitted by Director Brony, dated April 3rd, 2019. And then we'll have the liens list. So whenever you want me to. I just wanted to update uh, the two that uh, Kristen mentioned was the, uh, the home on Temple Heights Road. That was the one gentleman that was here where the vehicle ran into the house. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a plywood board. Yeah. Well, he painted it and he took down the vines. Oh, so it put in the property good. in compliance. The other one was Bush Boulevard. That is the old Kmart building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still vacant at this time, but however, we got the property cleaned up and uh, it seems to be a dumping ground periodically. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to keep our eyes and ears open and keeping an eye on that property. Okay. okay. I want to thank you for your work with the Huntley Harrison property. Yes. Well, that, I mean, that property there was just a change of ownership. And I was going to tell you that on the liens list. Okay. Uh, whenever we have a, a change of ownership, this is uh, Harrison had passed away. Mm -hmm. So she, there's a change of ownership as far as now the son is the owner. And Pam recommended that we close up those cases and we will probably be presenting new cases to the board. Okay. Okay. So that's why we probably removed four of those cases off that liens list. Uh, just also, since we're mentioning that, um, the 108 Holland, uh, that was a Thrasher property. We demoed that, that house, and that removed three of the uh, cases that were against the Thrasher family as well. So um, so there are, I've never seen a liens list this short, this short <laughs> in the 12 years I've been here. Still so, by you. Well, my staff yeah. is the commander, they're the one, course. and they really do an outstanding job, and uh, so, I, again, I've never seen a list that short. And uh, so I think things are happening. Uh, the city attorney is definitely helping us move things along, and we're, we're going in the right direction. Yes, sir. Mr. Snelling. I, I saw Vincent Hernandez at the last city council meeting. Did, did that lien get eventually completely paid? Yeah, that was, that was a nail biter, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, and I hate to say that, but uh, our goal is that he paid, yeah. and he did pay. And awesome. Um, the property Great. is in compliance and the lien is satisfied. Awesome. So, but thanks. You guys there. cleared out what uh, almost Two a dozen days. cases in a month. That's that's still oh, yeah. work. That's yeah. awesome. Yes, yeah. it's it was quite a bit. And again, when there's a change of ownership, we do have to remove them, but we have to open up another case. So, mm -hmm. um, we are we are moving along. And so appreciate it. Have you had contact? With, sorry. Okay. Have you had contact with the son since her passing? Uh, no. Okay. And the, the thing is, um, it's a very sensitive property, yep. Yep. and uh, we have to be escorted up to the front door. So Correct. It's a lot of, there's a lot involved there. Yeah, I remember yeah. that case. Okay. <laughs> That's why I was asking if you had, and I know that you mentioned you're going to open new cases, but I do know that there's some, I believe there are some precarious circumstances around yes. that. Yes, yes. It's a chance to turn around, though. Right. Right now. Yes, sir. I said one other, one other quick kudo for you guys. That, that 104 Mission Hills house is looking pretty good now. That well, pretty yeah, good. again, that was another nail biter. I probably lost all my hair from that property. <laughs> but uh, again, that was a property that um, puts a smile on my face when I drive by there every time I go by there. Um, you know, there were some promises made. I didn't know if there were going to be empty promises, but as far as I'm concerned, um, that, that property there for 10 years was a vacant property. Mm -hmm. It was, I was the zone inspector. I dealt with that property a lot in the past, probably presented, I don't know, 10 cases to the code board, Easy. probably opened yeah. 40 cases against the property. So I'm glad to see the property the way it is, the progress of that property. Uh, the structure to me right now looks unbelievable. Just I mean, the structure. Yeah. Whole, yeah. So it, the whole it, it does. Yeah. And, uh, again, I think overall, I think the neighborhood will be very pleased after so many years of being an eyesore. So, and thank you for the pats on the back for my staff. I, I appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. thank you. Another board action? Yes. So, um, we have one case in compliance on the liens list. That is case number 183940, City versus Esther. Elizabeth Foley, 8712 Coral Don Court, and the rest of them are not in compliance still. Okay. So case number 
2557B, City versus Jeffrey L. Rhodes and Vernica L. Rhodes, 708 Grand Circle. Case number 080292, City versus Christopher B. York, 7604 Leon Avenue. Case number 152510, City versus Quayley Berry Jr., 10014 North 52nd Street. Case number 160491, City versus Richard D. Warren and Deborah L. Warren, 108 Mission Hills Avenue. Case number 162397, City versus Dudley A. Black, 9408 Hidden Ridge Place. Case number 172613, City versus Dudley A. Black, 9408 Hidden Ridge Place. Case number 172746, City versus James Stevens Johnson and Glenda Johnson, 104 Holland Avenue. Case number 172786, City versus Anthony D. and Marcina L. Bobo, 7501 Okeechobee Court. And case number 183885, City versus Diplomat Property Manager, LLC, 107S Greenfield Avenue. Uh, Kristen, I think we talked about this a while ago about whether these are, people are notified quarterly that are on the liens list. Is that being done? Yes, they will receive a letter that they are still out of compliance and what their current um, current um, lien total is as of today's date. Because the, the most recent ones are attainable at this point. They, they're accumulating, they're accruing, but they're, mm -hmm. not, they're not ridiculous at this point. It would be nice for them to be reminded. And they will. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, I wanted to say, well, the city manager was here. Uh, the last council meeting um, it was voted in. There's a ordinance that the city manager had a big input on, as well as Pam and myself, as far as uh, abandoned properties. Uh, we voted in, or council voted in last meeting. Uh, this is to help us use as a tool that we could use to prevent uh, vacant or vacant properties being uh, overtaken by squatters. Mm -hmm. And so this is just another tool that we could use to prevent that. So excellent. I, but the city manager had a huge input on that. And I, I want to thank him for that. But yeah. it's appreciated. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> there being no Mr. other Chair? business. Got something. Yes, sir. If I can address the board. Sure. Um, I've been here about six months now, and if you recall, when I first got here, we talked a bit about the motions, and there was some inquiries about, you know, whether we could revise the motions or not. Um, I, <clears throat> I think it's time for us to address that, and what I'd like to do. I have some draft motions, um, one for existing violations, one for complied violations, one for complied and existing violations, and one for repeat violations. What I'd like to do is if I could uh, hand these to <clears throat> Ms. Garcia, she can then send them out, scan them perhaps, send them out by email if you guys can take a look at them, and then uh, we perhaps talk about them and see if you want to use them, if you have any changes, whatever, uh, at the next meeting. Um, there are some things we probably should change, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like to go ahead and get that addressed now and, and you know, as soon as possible. Did you Except the one for lien reductions as well, the statement for that? We had, I can send that. We, uh, I thought we had, uh, I thought that was agreed upon, but we can throw that in there. I got that right here. Yeah, it hasn't been added yet, I don't believe. Okay. And, well, at the same time, I do have the motion for the recommendation for foreclosure, too. So I'll, awesome. I'll bundle them all together. How's Great. That? And then um, remember, don't uh, discuss, you know, don't send. Like reply all, don't the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that way. Uh, we'll just discuss them again to right. take a look at them. If you have any input uh, at the next meeting, David, I think it would be uh, behoove us to have um, our code enforcement people take a look at them as well as, yeah. as well as in our in-house council. Correct. Yeah. Just get everybody's input. I know that's some kind. It's like building a building a horse by committee, but right. I think everybody deserves their input on it. Yeah, if we all, we could all look at them at the same time, and then we all have input at yeah. our next meeting, which is May 8th. That's all I have. Okay, thank Perfect. you. Thank, thank you. you. If there is no other business to entertain, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor?
Aye. 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 Okay. No days. <laughs> I was, I was going to get my point. Your point? Yeah.